William Gaunt starred in his first television series, Sergeant Cork, in 1963, and went on to appear in many shows, including the internationally successful The Champions in 1968. He was brought up in Pudsey in West Yorkshire, and after his national service was expected to return there, but he had other plans. I was expected to go back and, and join my father's firm as an article clerk to become a solicitor. But having escaped into the army, I was more independent-minded uh, than I certainly was uh, before I went in to the army. So I decided, uh, myself and, uh, and uh, another uh, uh, soldier from, from Malta called Donald Douglas, uh, we decided to try an audition for for Prada. We didn't know of any other drama schools really, and we knew of Central School, but that's about it. But, and there weren't many um, uh, then. So we auditioned for Rada. Donald Douglas got in, and I didn't. But I was on a sort of reserve list. What year was this? 58? Hmm? What year was this? 58, 59? This must have been 58, I suppose, yes. 58. Yeah, probably. 57, 58. And I was born in 37, so it was, you know, I'd be 20 when I came out of the army, yeah, so it was 57, <coughs> and 58. And I, but I was on the, on the reserve list, you know, in other words, the analyst yeah. and, and things, and I got in. And so we both got in. And uh, in the, my, my first class there, uh, there were people like Edward Fox and uh, in the next intake there was Sarah Miles in the intake just before me there was Sean Phillips, Sean Phillips and, and uh, uh, a lot of people who, who fell by the wayside but, uh, but quite a few that continued on and uh, it was uh, a revelation to me we had some marvellous teachers we had the great Clifford Turner doing voice his voice and speech in the theatre book is still you know, in print, I believe. And uh, and Peter Barkworth was, was a tremendous teacher, uh, was a, a working actor, working in the West End in a play called Roar Like a Dove, I remember, um, and in a, another play. And he was a real working actor, but teach, taught. Uh, time. He was never off television. Never off television. Well, that was later. Yeah. That was later. He must uh, have been very young. He was quite young, yes, he was quite young. He, I mean, he's gone now, but um, he must have been in his 30s, I suppose, uh, uh, at the most. He was a wonderful teacher, and he taught something called technique, which, uh, which just seemed to be invaluable, and we couldn't understand why it wasn't sort of central in the, you know, on the curriculum, really, apart from voice, obviously, which, which was very central, but there were an awful lot of other things, like fencing, and things like that, which didn't, we didn't think we'd have much uh, use for, really, uh, you know, unless we got into Romeo and Juliet. And uh, so he was a tremendous influence on, on a whole group of us, really, and particularly Edward Fox and I. We were the sort of, I suppose, the two that, uh, that, that he got on with him best, and, and, and he, he, he seemed to take us rather under his wing. He was gay, of course, and, uh, and, um, but was a tremendous man. Um, uh, and I, I kept up with him right, right to the end. I used to see him occasionally. When did he die? He died about three years ago, I suppose, five years ago. I don't know. I don't remember hearing about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was 20 years ago. Clifford was an even greater influence, Clifford Turner. A great voice teacher. A uh, delightful man. Uh, everybody, everybody loved him and thought he was extraordinary. He'd get us all to lie down on the floor and for doing re relaxation and uh, re be breathing, etc., etc. And, and he'd speak to us very quietly. He had this wonderful voice, marvelous sort of lifless voice. And uh, and he often used to fall asleep. And we'd he'd stop, he'd stop speaking, and we'd look up and do that because he was getting on a bit. <laughs> he was a wonderful teacher, though. And and I, I arrived on the first day, and I with my West Riding background, and uh, having been in the army, and we all had to do a piece for him, and I decided to do the chorus from Henry V. 
uh, as my piece for him. And I started, oh, for a muse of fire. And he just went, oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> and I continued on. And he just continued to chuckle with this, this broad, west riding Yorkshire accent. And uh, I, was, I was mortified, obviously, uh, and uh, desperate about it. And I, I said to him at the end of the lesson, you know, what, or probably a bit later, I don't know when, but at some stage in the first term, <coughs> Uh, you know, um, I, how, how do you think I'm getting on? He said, oh, you're getting all right. Um, uh, but he said, you, you could always come to me, you know, for a few sessions, privately, one-to-one. And so I said, oh, yes, I'd like to do that. And he had an office, and uh, he used to teach at RADA and at Central School. And he had an office at Central School uh, where he used to take private pupils, um, like me. And uh, he said, um, I charge a guinea. Uh, <laughs> I said, a, a guinea? Um, uh, yes. I said, is that for the, for how many weeks, six weeks? He, he suggested I come to him. I said, is that for the six weeks? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. That's for, for we. So, and I was on a three pound um, grant from West, West, uh, the West Riding County Council in Wakefield. Uh, I, wor- I, I, did quite, I worked quite a lot in, in pubs and cafes and stuff as well, near Rada in Gower Street. Well, Tottenham Court Road around there. Bertarelli is a famous in, Italian restaurant that several of us have worked in. But anyway, I spent the, the six guineas, six pounds, six shillings. Probably the best investment I've ever made in myself. You still had your Yorkshire accent when you went to Rada? I can use it. No, did you have it? Did you still have it? Your uh, Yorkshire accent when you went to Rada? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes, it was. It was. It, it came out in, in that. Oh, for muse of fire. Oh, for a muse of fire. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? <laughs> and why not? Exactly. Nowadays, it would be lauded. You know, you could go and work for the dreaded Barry Rutter up in Northern States. But um, but yeah, Rada then you you had to eradicate that. Um, it wasn't. Yeah, I think you just missed, right? you were a couple of years before it became sort of almost yes, de rigueur. Yes, exactly, you? absolutely, and then it suddenly well, became, it suddenly became de rigueur. But, um, but no, it was a received pronunciation we had to have, RP. Otherwise you would not get any work out of it if you talk <laughs> like that. <laughs> Was that, were there problems getting a place if you had a, a regional accent in Rada? Um, no. Or, did they, or were they confident that they could knock it out of you? No, I, I think that John Fernald, who would not long taken over from Sir Kenneth Barnes, who was there for years and years, John Fernald was a bit of a new broom uh, at Rada, and I think he was probably encouraging. But there were still quite a lot of old teachers there. There was a woman called... Uh, what was her name? Who sort of taught genteel dance? <laughs> and Amy Bolt, I think her name was, and she was ancient. She probably was only about fifty, but she seemed incredibly ancient to us. Um, and there was Madame Federal, who who did sort of movement, and she was sort of a bit butch, I think. And um, and and the, and. And, and Froschlein, who did fencing, who was sort of, and they were scars. <laughs> it was extraordinary. <laughs> sort of Prussian. It, 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 so, so it was in transition. So I think that's why, why, why I got in. Um, and obviously John Fernald knew that they, they could sort that part of it out. Then an extraordinary thing happened to me. The, there, was a, there was a competition... Um, well, it was announced that all leavers from all the drama schools in London uh, and Bristol uh, could audition to go to America to join a newly built theatre in Dallas, in Texas, Dallas Theatre Centre. And, uh, and Charles Lawton himself. So this was, was what, 59? This was 59. Charles Lawton himself was going to going to host the auditions with a woman called Ali Scache, who was uh, uh, quite a well-known teacher and, uh, and performer. And myself and a, and a boy called Barry Boys 
whose brother was a theatrical photographer called Michael Boys, uh, who was quite well known. Yeah. And, uh, and Barry Boys and I were chosen um, by, um, by Charles Lawton. I did the final speech from the diary of Anna Frank, where Mr. Frank describes how he discovered that Anna had, had died. Uh, and it's a very emotional, probably quite sentimental now speech. But I saw um, Charles Lawton, who was, whose emotions were very on the surface, I think, uh, weeping away before I got to the end. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought I might be in with a chance here, I think. And uh, sure enough, uh, off we went. The cheapest way to go to America in those days, to Dallas and Texas, was to take a boat across the Atlantic and, and then take a Greyhound bus from New York to, uh, to Dallas. So the journey took two weeks and a bit, or about two weeks really. And, uh, and so we completed that and, and I spent a year at the Dallas Theatre Center. Uh, and you were doing rap? Yes, we were. Yes, we were. Um, we, were did, we did. We did Hamlet. We, 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 there was a big company, a company of 75. Mainly American, only two young English. No, from all over the world. Oh, okay. Uh, and we did a lot of plays. We did new plays. We did Hamlet, for example. And Burgess Meredith came to play um, Hamlet. But there were two other Hamlets because yeah. Paul Baker, who directed it, decided he would have he would have three of each character. Uh, main characters in the play so that the soliloquies could be conversations amongst the same character right so uh, what a rogue and pleasant to say am I or to be or not to be that is the question three characters and there were about 27 bodies on the stage at the end but that was, that was a minor one. did it work? <laughs> not really no uh, and, uh, too many people too confusing and we did it on a huge ramp in the end. <laughs> but we also did a lot of, a lot of um, quite conventional productions. We did The Importance, and I played Jack, and, um, and Barry played Algy. And, um, and um, we had a woman called Mary Lou Hoyle, who came from the South, played Lady Bracknell. So it was uh, a hand band <laughs> and all that.